name's Russell Seymour. I'm 62 years old. I've been a Christian for over 35 years. I've seen a lot. I've been involved in a lot. In 1998, I was given six months to live because of bone marrow cancer. In 2019, 2018, sorry, I was given 24 hours to live. That's happened to me three times. And the last time was three years ago where the doctors have said there's nothing they can do to help me. They were going to put me into another room, make me comfortable so I could pass on. I said, oh, I don't want to choose to die. There's something else you're going to need to do. I believe I'm alive because God wants me alive. Now, I know God wants everyone alive. I don't believe that God has the power to kill me, even though he has the power of life and death in his hand. I don't believe that God wants people dead. I think he wants people alive. And I don't believe that sickness is God's will. I believe it's the opposite. I think it's the enemy's will. And the reason I'm making this video is I want to start a revolution. Because as a Christian, I've heard the audible voice of God three times. I've been taken to heaven. I've had two divine visitations. I've seen an angel. And I've heard God's lots of times for other people. And I've realised that there's a power of God that I'm only just scratching the surface of. Because as I read the Bible, I see that it should be normal, common, for Christians to exert and express the power of God. There's no excuse. For instance, we pray and we sing God come, and yet he's already come. He lives in us. What he has done is he's given us a new spirit. That new spirit is the spirit of his son. So we have one third of our being, which is our spirit, completely as Jesus is. The Bible says, if you receive Jesus, you have the authority or the right to become a son of God. So when we become born again, we receive Jesus. Then we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now that baptism in the Holy Spirit is for power. The Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That power is, the, is God's power. The same Holy Spirit, the Bible says, that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. So why did he say the same Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave? Because that was his greatest demonstration of power. In raising Jesus from hell, he didn't leave Jesus' body to die through corruption through degradation and decomposing. He actually raised him up and seated him at the right hand of the Father and the right hand of his power, it says. But also, the Bible says, of his fullness, the Father, of the Father's fullness have we received. So we have all of the Holy Spirit, we have all of the Father and all of Jesus living in us. So what's he doing? He wants to be expressed we are Jesus to this planet. Everything that Jesus had and did, we are supposed to do. And in fact, Jesus said, you'll do greater things than these. Now, what is the prerequisite? Because I really struggle, because I don't have an ascension calling other than evangelist. But I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher, I'm not an apostle, I don't have any great anointings as such. And one day I asked God, I said, what right have I got? And it says, those who believe, those who believe will cast out demons. Those who believe will perform miracles and heal the sick. Those who believe, that's the only prerequisite, is you've got to believe God's word. And I struggle with that because my circumstances shout at me a lot. My bones break. I go to hospital all the time because of sickness. And the sickness is screaming so loud that I have to struggle to believe the truth of God's word. I read once about a man called John Wimber. John Wimber was a young pastor in America. And as a young pastor, one Sunday afternoon, he was praying and saying, God, what do you want me to preach on tonight? And God spoke to him and said, I want you to preach on healing and pray for people to be healed. Well, boy, as a young pastor, what an exciting thing. God spoke to him about healing. He was excited. Visions of people being healed and, and the power of God being released. So he prepared the best message he ever could about healing. <clears throat> that night he preached his heart out. He put everything into it. He had an altar call. People came forward. He prayed for them and no one was healed. He went home gutted. 
few days later, after the disappointments of that, that message wore off, same thing, God, what do you want me to preach on? God said, I want you to preach on healing. And so he preached again on healing, the best message, better than the week last week. And he kept doing that. Week after week after week after week after week for six months and no one was healed. After six months he went into his office, got down on his knees and was angry with God. He said, God, I've been doing your word, I've been preaching your word, I've been praying for the sick, I've been preaching your word. Why aren't people healed? What is going on? And God said to him, and I need you to hear this, God said to him, you preach my word, not your experience. And shortly after, people started to get healed. And then he ended up with a healing ministry and he ended up writing a couple of books. Healing Evangelism was one of them. As Christians, we put too much validity on our experience. Abraham had his name changed from Abram to Abraham so God could get him to speak you're a father of many nations. And what was John Wimber doing? He was speaking and sowing the seed. And so the first, we know the first parable that Jesus spoke of, it was the seed. He said, you get this one, you get them all. And it was about the seed of God's word. The seed was sown. And if the heart is right, our hearts are right, we will receive and produce a, a fruit-bearing heart, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. But the seed is the word. And so we need to sow the word. How do we sow the word? Well, first of all, God's word was spoken so that it could be written. And it was written so that we could hear it and renew our mind, so we could speak it. So this is the principle I want to share with you today. You take God's word and you find God's word for you. And you speak it. You speak the word. What are you doing? You are speaking the word. You are sowing seeds. So there's four things you need to be able to do. First of all, you need to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, the Bible says. It doesn't come by reading. It comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Now, faith will come. If you go to the gym, you'll start to exercise. Muscle will come because you're exercising the muscles. If you go on a diet and you want to lose weight, because you're doing the right thing by your body, your body will lose weight. It is a natural attrition for you to lose weight if you're eating correctly. You'll put on muscle if you are exercising correctly. Faith will come if you hear God's word. Faith will come if you hear God's word. So you must hear God's word. You must believe it must believe God's word. It doesn't matter our circumstances. We believe God's word. We believe that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We believe that I have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit living in me. He abides in me. All of, all of the, the Godhead have I received. Of his fullness have I received. The Holy Spirit is in me giving life to my mortal body. You must hear God's word. You must believe God's word. You must speak God's word. Speak the word. God formed his world with his words. We form our world with our words. The biggest mistake is that we say what we have instead of having what we say. We say, I'm sick. We say, I am poor. But no, God's word says the opposite. God's word says that by his stripes, Jesus we were healed, healed 2,000 years ago. It's a done deal, part of the atonement. Hear God's word, believe God's word, speak God's word, and we will see God's word. One of the things that we need to do is keep speaking, keep speaking, keep believing, keep believing until we start to see the results. One of the things that amazes me is I've sat under a lot of good teaching and I've seen snippets of the power of God and yet I'm reading that God wants to exalt the miracles and signs and wonders because that is proof of who we are. Jesus said, hey, okay, if you don't believe the message, 
believe the works that I do. You know, we can stand there and speak and prove, prove Jesus, pull someone out of a wheelchair. They're going to be gobsmacked. They're going to go, how did you do that? You now have credibility to preach Jesus. You now have credibility in what you've done. And they may say, but I don't believe in Jesus. And you say, hey, then believe in the works that he has just done through me for you. As Christians, we have a responsibility. I can tell you now, God is waiting for us. We are not waiting for God. Revival comes when God's word is preached. As Christians, we've had millions of people around the world praying for a move of God. And a friend of mine, a gentleman when I was at Bible college, said he was, he remembers, he was pounding on the table in a minister's prayer meeting and the ministers of Perth and West Australia were praying for revival. And my friend was going, God, you've got to do something. God, you've got to do something. God, you've got to do something. And as he's pounding the table, he had a vision in heaven of God saying, Les, who was my friend, Les, you've got to do something. Les, you've got to do something. Les, you've got to do something. It's our responsibility to heal the sick. God gave us a responsibility. You know, there's a movie out called 300. It's a very bloodthirsty movie. It's about Spartans against the Persian Mede army. And they thwarted that army and c killed many, many soldiers. Eventually they died. But at the end of the movie, this man stood there and he said, the Mede and Persian army knew what it was like to handle 300 and it was devastating to them. And as the camera pan back, he said, now they're going to feel the force of 10,000 of us. Well, that's the same. You know, as Christians realise that we are Jesus to this planet and God has given us everything we need. Everything we need. Everything we need. Through his power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. If the people couldn't handle one Jesus, and then 144 of them, and then 3,000, 7,000, and then move around the world, if every Christian realised that we are meant to display the power of God, I guarantee you this, revival will come. God is not the orchestrator of revival. We are. We are. Revival means to be revived. So first of all, you must have lived. Well, revival is about reviving, bringing back to life those that are alive, which are the Christians. Revival is revival of the church, not the unsaved. Revival means that, that there's a new life in the church. And I guarantee you this, the power of God being released to the church will bring revival to the church, which will then cause us to spill out into the world and preach the gospel. And as I said before, you open the blind eyes, you healed a child, that a family has no doubt that God has done it for them. And it will be the easiest message and the easiest witness and the easiest way to declare Jesus to this planet. I challenge you, I want to start a revolution. I challenge you to study the past tenses of the New Testament. That which God has already done for us and in us. We have already received the Father, we've already received the Son, we've already received the Holy Spirit, we've already received power. We've already received all things that pertain to life and godliness. We already have the mind of Christ. We already have strength, we already have wisdom, we already have the same spirit of faith. We already have these things because God has already done it for us. What we've got to do is, first of all, we've got to hear the word. My people perish through lack of knowledge. We've got to believe the word. We've got to speak the word. We've got to see the word. And as we speak, and as we speak, and as we speak, and as we speak, those seeds will bear fruit, some 30 some 60, some 100 fold. I challenge you to study the past tenses, what God has already done for you. He has already healed us for a start. You were healed. You were healed. You were healed. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. Start the revolution of God's power.